So, the binomial expansion. Binomial meaning having two parts, like a plus b, where a and b could be constants, variables, or expressions in their own right. But it's not just that part of it, it's the expansion. What happens if you have various powers of this? Well, the trivial case would be power 1, because that would just be a plus b. Right, what about a plus b squared? Well, you'd probably know that one anyway, just from a simple pattern. Square the first, square the last, in the middle, twice the product. But I'll we'll spell this one out. I've got a plus b times a plus b for squaring. Now, straight away, that means I've got 2 times 2 is 4 products because I've got 2 to the power 2 there, 2 times 2. But of those four products, they'll not all be different. Some will be a squares, some will just be a's, and some will be no a's at all, with the corresponding part being the b's, because each of the products is going to have two factors, one from this bracket, one from that bracket. So that means that a squares, there's only one way of doing that. Take that a and that a, and that's both their factors used up. What about a's on their own? Well, they can't happen on their own. If I choose an a from one bracket, I'll have to have the b from the other bracket. Many ways can that happen? Well, either I could either have that a, and the other one's b, or that a, and the other one's b. So there's two ways of doing that. And lastly, there's only one way of having none of the a's, which is having both of the b squares. 1 and 2 and 1, that adds up to the 4. What about a plus b to the power 3 then? Well, spelling it out again. That's a plus b times a plus b times a plus b. This time I've got 2 times 2 times 2. That's 2 to the power 3, that's 8. There are 8 products, and each product is going to have 3 factors, one from each bracket. But there won't be 8 terms altogether, because some of them will produce the same thing. It's just a case of how many, those being the coefficients, the binomial coefficients. What we've got, well, there's only one way of making a cubed. And actually take the a from each bracket, so there's no b's used at all. What about a squared? That means I take a from two of the brackets, and the third one will have to give me a b, because there has to be three factors altogether, one from each bracket. Well, how many ways are there of making a squared? You can either think how many ways of choosing two from three objects, two out of the three brackets, or conversely, how many ways are there of not choosing that and just choosing one b? Well, that's three. Well, but a is just choosing one a from one bracket, and then the rest will have to be filled out with b's b squared for the rest of the factors. Well, there's only one, there's three ways of choosing just one a. And then lastly, b cubed, there's only one way, you take them all, you take all the b cubed. You can see the pattern emerging now. So if that was a plus b to the power 4, this is, this is the last one, I'll spell out the long way, so a plus b, a plus b, a plus b, it would look like that. There's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. That's 2 to the power 4 products there. <coughs> oh, so to that last one, 8, they added up to 8. 1 plus 3 and 3 and 1, that makes 8. This time there should be 16 factors, but they will all be different. And it's the same as before. It's going to go, if I choose the a from each, I'll have a to the 4. If I just choose 3 of the a's, I'll go down a to the 3, then a to the 2, then a to the 1, and then finally no a's. This is really just a case of what are the coefficients. Well, a to the 4, there's only one way of getting a to the 4. I take the a from each bracket so b doesn't get a look in. So that's a to the 4 finished. What about a cubed? That means I use a's out of three of the brackets, but that means there has to be a b for the remaining factor because there has to be four factors altogether. So how many ways of choosing three of the a's out of the four? That's the same as saying how many ways of choosing just one of the b's to be left out out of the four. Well, there's four ways. Then it would go to a squared, balancing out with b squared for the other two brackets. How many ways are there of choosing, and it's the same both ways this time, two out of the four? Well, I can either have that one, that, that pair, that pair, that pair, that pair, that pair, and that pair is six. And then this part's now symmetrical. What about single a's? Well, it'll just be four. I'll have that one, that one, that one, or that one. Balance with b cubes, and finally b to the power four. But you can see what's happening here with these coefficients. These coefficients, the numbers that are multiplying each of the terms were the combinations. They were all 4c something or other, depending how many ways you wanted to choose so many from the total number altogether. So that with this one, you could say that was 4c4, 
But you know that 4C4 is the same as 4C0, because choosing all of them is equivalent to choosing none of the other one. Same here, that could be 4C3, but 4C3 is the same as 4C1. Choosing 3 is the same as leaving 1 out. It would be better to use these ones because these would climb up through the expression and you're used to having a variable that ascends in order. So I think we'll put them in that order there. The important bit is these are just the combinations. So that I could leap straight into the next one. What if it was a plus b to the power 5? Now I know there's going to be 2 to the power 5 then. There's going to be 32 altogether. Oh, of course I didn't mention that. 16 there. Add those numbers up and they come to 16. 10, 14, 16. So the the total of the coefficients in this should come to 32. But what are the coefficients? Well, those are just the combinations. And another part that can make it slightly neater, instead of saying this, 5C0, A to the 5, plus 5C1, A to the 4B, it takes just slightly less room, maybe it's slightly less confusing about what's multiplying what. If you use this notation, just 5, 0, which is an alternative notation in this context for combinations. Yes, it might look like a column vector, but you know from the context it stands for a combination. You would read that as 5CR, even though there's no C to look at. So that would be 5, 0, A to the 5, equivalent to choosing no Bs, plus 5C1, A to the 4B, equivalent to how many ways of choosing 1B, I'll put the 1 in, plus 5c2 a to the 3, they'll have to go up to b squared because there always has to be 5 factors equivalent to how many ways of choosing 2 b's 5c3 a squared b cubed 5c4, that was a nasty combination a b to the 4 and finally 5c5 just of b to the power 5 would be the expansion for that where those numbers are if I just write them out. Now I mentioned Pascal's triangle elsewhere, which gives you these coefficients. Pascal's triangle is just full of the combinations. Well, that's just one. So it would be a to the 5, that's just 5, plus 5 a to the 4b, that's 10. 10 a cubed b squared, that's also 10. 10 a squared b cubed, that's 5 because they're equivalent. 5 a, b to the 4, plus finally, b to the 5. That would be the binomial expansion of a plus b to the power 5. Now, those were just particular cases. What about the general case? What about the general case of a plus b to the power n? <coughs> Straight away, that's not going to be quite so easy to write out. Because with 5, I had 6 terms. With n... I don't know how many terms I'm going to have. Well, I know it's going to be n plus 1, but I certainly can't space it out in the board here. So I'll have to use, I'll have to just set it like this to begin with. I know it's going to be n0, because that was the power that started with, of a is going to start off at n, and b will be originally, initially 0. It'll then go to n1, a will have to go to n minus 1, and b will go up to 1. Thank you very much. It'll then go to n2, a will drop 2, b will climb to 2, but it'll go on like that for as long as it takes to get to n. So finally, I'll just put in the final one, n, n, a to the, well that would have to be a to the 0 it's reached now, and that's going all the way up to b to the n. But it's not very satisfactory writing in that way, and I've got this big addition, and it is an addition of all these terms, and I don't really know how many terms there are there to space all out, so I have to leave this little gap indicated by the, that little ellipsis. This is where sigma, <coughs> sigma notation comes in handy. Sigma as in capital S for the sum of from the Greek alphabet. Capital S in the Greek alphabet, sigma, the sum of. That's a handy thing to use in a case like this, where I don't really know how many things to write out. If I had something like this, for instance, if I've got sigma r, what that says is add up a big bunch of r's. Sigma r just means I've got r plus r plus r plus r plus r. It means add up a big bunch of r's. There's no instruction here to tell me when to stop. That's why you put values in. So if I say 
add up a big bunch of R's, starting with R is 1, well that means that would be then 1, then stopping when R reaches 4. So that says sigma from R equals 1 to 4 of whatever the expression is. That would mean I've got a big bunch of R's. You have to be careful how you say that. We are, first of all then, you start with R as 1, and then you ascend through them in order. So that next order would be 2, next one would be 3, until you finally get to 4. So up to 4. So we just stop there. That's what that piece of notation would stand for. And of course, that's handier the bigger that is. So that's going to come to 10. Well, you could use the same here. So there must be a neat way of writing this out using sigma notation that saves you having to put this, put this big spread down. So sigma. Well, what's the only thing that's changing? It's this number at the bottom. So that number at the bottom you could write down as r. And it's starting at 0, so r equals 0. And it goes as far as n. So r equals 0 to n. So I'm going to add up a big bunch of whatever I happen to put here. Whatever I put here will just keep getting repeated. The only difference is r each time will start climbing up from 0 till eventually it reaches n. Well, what is that thing that I should put there? Well, that thing that I should put there would be the binomial coefficient, nc, oops, ncr, a. <coughs> now, the pattern goes like this. It's the b that's climbing up with the r, so I think I'll put the b next. So it's b that actually gets the r, and n makes up the balance of it. When it's 1, it's n minus 1, and when it's 2, it's n minus 2, so n minus r. That would be the formula for the binomial expansion. That's the important part here. Using sigma notation. Very handy, concise piece of notation.